And uh, so why don't I just jump in and say that this is, uh, this is a joint meeting, which we appreciate having between the House Healthcare Committee and the House Commerce and Economic Development Committee. And uh, specifically because we both are concerned about workforce issues and wanting to and have been addressing workforce issues. And uh, so um, for those who don't know, I'm Bill Lippert. I'm the chair of the House Healthcare Committee. And Mike, you want to introduce yourself as the chair? Thank you, uh, Bill. I really appreciate um, the invitation that you extended to us for to meet with you. Um, this is an important uh, topic for us, uh, as well as you. Um, and uh, we really appreciate it. So I am uh, Mike Marcotte. I'm from Coventry and chair House Commerce and Economic Development. Great. So um, given, our, given that we have an hour uh, with Ian, as my understanding, you have other commitments um, as well. But um, I'm not sure everyone on your committee will have met uh, Ina Bacchus before. Uh, perhaps I'm wrong on that, but uh, Ina, do you want to enter? So we've invited Ina Bacchus, who's the Director of Healthcare Reform for the state of Vermont, to present the uh, healthcare strategic workforce. Well, she'll get the name right, but it's basically the healthcare workforce strategic plan, which uh, she has uh, overseen and facilitated. And I believe there are links. There should be a link to an overview of that report. Do most folks have aware that they have that? And uh, I'm guessing that that will be helpful in following the presentation. The overview um, link is not working um, for me. Okay, it wasn't working for me earlier, but then it, I think it was taken down and put back up. Can you try again and see if it comes through this time? Do other, are there other folks able to access it just by nodding heads? I see some nodding heads. Yep. Yep. And uh, so are those who were not able to access it, are you able to get it now? Yeah, I see, I see nodding heads. Okay. so. Um, Mike, if it's okay, I'm just going to ask Ina to go ahead and uh, begin uh, a pre for, to, introduce, to welcome you and then introduce yourself uh, and um, give us the opportunity to hear about the uh, Healthcare Workforce Development Strategic Plan. So I'll turn it over to you. Thank you. Good afternoon. Happy New Year. My yes. name is Ina Bacchus. I am the Director of Health Reform at the Agency of Human Services. And in my role, I am responsible for coordinating healthcare reform initiatives um, between uh, government agencies and departments and also with the Green Mountain Care Board. I, if it's helpful to the committee, I can share my screen, the committees, and it is very exciting to um, have the opportunity to meet with both committees together um, on this important topic. If it is all right with you, I will share my screen to walk through the presentation. Does that work for your committee? We, we go back and forth. Sometimes we share the screen and sometimes we don't, but I think it might be helpful. Yeah, I think it sounds good. We generally have screen sharing. Okay, Thank you. go for it, you know. Okay. And I'm just working through. I've been. Go. I think now you can see the slide. Yes. Yep. Full screen. Looks Full good. Screen. <laughs> Thank you again for having me to discuss the healthcare workforce development strategic plan. 
and I will provide an overview of the plan today and uh, assume that there may be further, um, there may be areas where you would want to dig more deeply in the future. Um, I think it's important to provide you with the background and process for this plan, uh, including the primary legislative charge for it, as well as background and context for our current healthcare uh, workforce challenges, which as you're all familiar are evolving um, along, with the, along with the pandemic that we're now multiple years in and are also not uh, different or unusual given the workforce challenges broadly speaking. And then I want to talk about the healthcare workforce development strategic plan itself and give an overview of the recommendations that are contained within it. The plan was required by Act 155 of 2020, which provided that the Director of Healthcare Reform and the Agency of Human Services maintain a current healthcare workforce development strategic plan and that it, um, and that it consult with an advisory group in maintaining that plan uh, and in updating the plan as well. The advisory group members are represented here, and the membership can, included representatives of the Green Mountain Care Board's primary care advisory group, the Vermont State Colleges, the Area Health Education Center's Workforce Initiative, federally qualified health centers, Vermont hospitals, physicians, mental health professionals, dentists, naturopathic physicians, home health agencies, long-term care facilities, uh, were all the designated uh, representatives in the advisory group. We also had participants in the advisory group, a number of subject matter experts um, from state government and sometimes beyond participated in the advisory group and their participation is much appreciated for the subject matter expertise that they brought. There, uh, we had regular participation from the Blueprint for Health, the Department of Labor, Division of uh, Vocational Rehabilitation, Green Mountain Care Board, Office of Professional Regulation, Office of Rural Health and Primary Care. Required by Act, um, Act 155 of 2020 was for the plan to be reviewed and approved by the Green Mountain Care Board. That requirement uh, timeline was amended by the big bill uh, in 2021. And so the plan was required to be submitted to the Green Mountain Care Board October 15th, 2021. The plan was presented to the board on October 20th, uh, 2021. I'm sorry for the typo there. And the plan revisions, um, there were plan revisions as a result of the public presentation, public comment was received, comments from board members were incorporated and the plan was revised and presented back to the board November 10th of 2021 and the board voted unanimously to approve the plan on November 12th. Current context for our workforce challenges and specifically our healthcare workforce challenges. I am sure that you've all been becoming familiar with the term, the great resignation. Uh, it is a term that is being used to describe the current experience uh, for the American workforce uh, prompted by or disrupted by the global health pandemic in COVID-19. Um, Americans are quitting their jobs in record numbers. The U.S. Chamber of Commerce reports that employers in South Dakota, Nebraska, and Vermont are experiencing the greatest challenge as the total jobs available in these states outnumber the total workers to fill them. So we are in a group of states experiencing some of the greatest challenge. Uh, we observed headlines just in the last couple of days about the rate of Americans quitting their jobs um, in November being the highest since that rate has been captured um, at the federal level. So we continue to see uh, Americans and Vermonters leaving jobs. Unlike past recessions, 
uh, where healthcare sector jobs have stayed strong, if you will, uh, or continue to grow, uh, we now can observe that uh, healthcare sector jobs are falling sharply alongside jobs for other sectors. And the Kaiser Family Foundation reports on this uh, in a recent data briefing. And here um, they depict the Kaiser Family Foundation using statistics from the Bureau of Labor uh, depict um, that health and human services employment in all sectors is below what it should be. Uh, here you can uh, see the sectors as depicted um, this is the percent difference in November 2021 for health employment by setting uh, actual versus projected um, were it not for the pandemic. So we are seeing healthcare employment below what uh, the projections for healthcare employment um, determine would be the appropriate level um, of employment. Also, over the last decade, uh, Vermont's home care workforce has declined. The home care workforce is defined as combined employment counts for two occupation types, personal care aides and home health aides. Personal care aides assist older adults or people of all ages who have disabilities with activities of daily living while home health aides provide routine individualized health care, such as changing bandages and dressing wounds. And you can see that in Vermont, our uh, number of workers in this, in this subsector of the healthcare workforce uh, has declined. And we are among a, a group of states, a small group of states where this number has declined. In order to maintain access to healthcare services, Vermont providers are relying on traveling staff. Uh, traveling, traveling staff have increased um, in their use, not only by hospitals, but by other healthcare employers as well. The Vermont Hospital Association reports that for hospital fiscal year 2020, to projected 2021, the use of travelers for hospitals who have reported information has increased 26% from 270 to 341 positions, while hospital costs associated with these services has increased 50% from 50 million to 75 million over the course of the year. Uh, further here, uh, home, excuse me, skilled nursing facilities are also relying on traveling staff in order to offer services and are relying more so on traveling staff in light of the challenges that the healthcare workforce is facing. So here you can see that in 2021 is estimated that the skilled nursing facilities will have um, spent $37 million uh, for traveling staff to ensure uh, access to their services. With that context, I want to share with you today a number of strategies um, that the advisory group uh, determined it would, it would want to recommend to improve our healthcare workforce in Vermont. These strategies include financial incentives, education and training, recruitment and retention, uh, how we can ensure that uh, regulations promote healthcare employment in the state, how we can ensure that the practice of healthcare promotes more employment in the state, and uh, recommendations for policy uh, changes or advocacy at the federal level that could promote and foster and strengthen healthcare employment in the state of Vermont, permanent healthcare employment in the state of Vermont. These recommendations are all framed uh, within the report um, as being organized through uh, interagency and department collaboration. And that collaboration is necessary uh, in order to carry through with these recommendations. Uh, just as you're meeting in a collaborative way across 
committees today. That is really the spirit of the of the framework that we um, recommend in the report for for following through with the um, various strategies for improving healthcare workforce in Vermont. We also recommend that there be designated a health data hub where data that describes healthcare employment in Vermont is brought together in a common place, particularly so that that data can be better harnessed for supply and demand modeling, which we don't currently do in the state of Vermont with workforce data, but we would like to see in the state of Vermont for workforce data in the future, that supply and demand modeling, better preparing uh, us for future need and informing policy decisions regarding the healthcare workforce. So the first grouping of, of recommendations are financial incentives for healthcare workers to live and work as permanent employees in Vermont. Um, these recommendations include broadening and expanding existing loan repayment programs to more professional types. Based on an evaluation of existing data and potential new sources of data, the advisory group and the strategic plan recommend that the area health education centers should develop a proposal for expanding its service-based loan repayment program so that it can include more health professionals such as mental health and substance use disorder treatment professionals and naturopathic practitioners, for example, and increase its current program offerings on the whole. Uh, these recommendations should include um, the funding necessary to increase existing loan repayment programs, as well as the funding necessary for including additional professional types. The next recommendation is to increase scholarship funding created by Act 155 of 2020 and to identify a permanent funding source. And the plan recommends that there be a, a, a that the interagency task team um, should recommend whether and how these scholarship and service opportunities be expanded to more healthcare professional types, including nursing faculty. Um, and recommend along with that evaluation and ongoing funding source. We also recommend evaluating the effectiveness of existing scholarship programs available to Vermonters who attend dental school, making financial ass assistance options for healthcare workforce clear and transparent and easy to find, and using VSAC and its resources as a clear wayfinder for this information so that, um, so that uh, potential or current health employees uh, can find um, programs to provide for um, potential financial assistance. In the category of financial assistance, uh, recommendations or financial incentives for healthcare workers to live in work in Vermont. We also propose a number of recommendations that would promote permanent healthcare employment and residency in Vermont. These include revisiting tax incentive proposals, um, looking at how other states um, have utilized tax incentive proposals to recruit young professionals and healthcare workers to live and work as permanent residents in the state. And in this reconsidering or revisiting of the tax incentive, we the plan also proposes that there should be consideration for the exemption of preceptor income in Vermont to participate uh, so that there is a stronger incentive for profession, healthcare professionals to participate in educating new professionals to the field and also that there should be consideration um, for those tax incentives that could be offered to employers who are offering housing or other benefits to full-time employees. And um, uh, generally um, tax incentives that can strengthen the, um, can strengthen the ability of employers to recruit 
um, and retain professionals as permanent employees in the state. We also recommend identifying barriers to recruitment and retention for the non-licensed workforce, um, identifying the most significant barriers for recruiting non-licensed allied health and direct support professionals to participate in Vermont's workforce. And there should be consideration given here in it to benefits cliffs, housing costs, transportation and competition from other industries, the training needs for this sector and career advancement opportunities um, for, this, for this sector of the healthcare workforce. We also recommend that one-time funds be used for healthcare employers to attract permanent employees. And here, um, this recommendation has been um, has has been um, taken and and is reflected in the proposal um, both for the budget adjustment as well as budget adjustment two. Um, through that proposal, there is we are recommending an investment in total of thirty three million dollars for healthcare providers to recruit, train, and retain um, uh, staff to be permanent employees. And um, through, this, through this investment, um, we are offering flexibility for employers um, to be able, to, be able to, to use dollars flexibly um, to attract um, and retain staff. Can, can I interrupt and just say, you know, I, I'm thinking that many of us will want to know more specifics about that proposal, but perhaps not now we'll, as we we'll work our way through the broad recommendations. But uh, I know that I have questions and I'm guessing others we've heard about this initiative, but not the detail of it. So. And I would be happy if you wanted to circle back to this in, in questions and I can, or I can take questions now or we can keep going. Uh, Mike, I'll, I, I would be inclined for us to keep going and circle back uh, because I think we could, <laughs> we could swallow, get swallowed up by this, uh, but uh, let, let's, let's, let's keep going. Okay. The final recommendation in this category is to consider a longer term grant incentive program. And here the, the advisory group and the report recommends that there be consideration for a longer term program to entice health professionals to seek permanent employment and resident, residency in Vermont. And that such a program could be modeled after or expand upon the remote worker program. And here's another a theme that runs throughout uh, the recommendations in this report or runs throughout the report of really utilizing our, our existing platforms for recruiting workers uh, to Vermont um, where necessary highlighting specific ways that Vermont is, um, is particularly well suited for health professionals but certainly capitalizing on our existing tools um, and, uh, and resources for attracting workers broadly to Vermont, but to include healthcare workers as well. The next set of recommendations regards education and training to strengthen the healthcare workforce. Uh, the first recommendation is to increase enrollment in nursing programs. And the advisory group recommended that the Office of Prof Professional Regulation should facilitate a working group between the schools of nursing and clinical sites, healthcare organizations, um, and others to establish a preceptor model of clinical training to maximize opportunities for student nurses who need to obtain the required clinical time and that would minimize the need for nursing programs to recruit additional faculty. Further, the report recommends that this work group should consider how preceptorships, should consider a model of preceptorships that uh, span the care continuum, including home and community-based settings. 
And the work group also recommended evaluating any gaps in compensation between academic faculty and practitioners, identifying possible solutions, and making any further recommendations necessary, including funding. Uh, this work group, um, as described in the plan, should also consider how nurses transitioning to retirement could be incentivized to work as nurse educators, and the working group should identify any additional barriers uh, and recommendations for increasing enrollment in nursing programs. The plan also recommends supporting a transition to practice program for professional roles. And within the $33 million that has been recommended to strengthen the workforce uh, in terms of immediate need for recruitment, retention, and training. Um, this aspect here is represented in that investment, meaning uh, we, we see a role for transition to practice programs uh, within those dollars that can help um, strengthen training for new graduate, uh, new graduate health professionals. We also recommend strengthening incentives for preceptors for all professions, exploring opportunities to expand family practice residency programs, modifying the curriculum to introduce primary care earlier in medical school. And here we recommend that the University of Vermont College of Medicine modify the curriculum for medical students to put more emphasis on primary care. And as an example, that students would start that primary care rotation early on in their programs and continue into, into the subsequent years of, of their education. We also recommend advancing a coordinated approach to promote healthcare careers in K-12 educational settings. And this approach would leverage existing resources in the state, such as the area health education centers, the Vermont, uh, State Student Assistance Corporation, BSAC, uh, Vermont After School Programs, Vermont Career and Technical Education Centers, and Vocational Rehab Programs. And through leveraging these resources um, and working uh, across these programs, clearly document and develop a plan to actively promote health care careers in K-12 educational settings. We also recommend establishing a physician education program. That recommendation requires, however, the Vermont State Colleges to study and provide a report to the legislature on the potential to offer a physician assistant program, including an analysis of the employer demand for the program. The study would also include a timeline to implement the program, the financial resources necessary to develop it, and to equip staff to operate such a program, in, uh, to equip the program and staff to operate such a program. And these, the report would need to include a timeline to obtain accreditation and to launch the first cohort of the program. The, the Workforce Development Strategic Plan also recommends modifying curriculum to prepare students for work in interdisciplinary teams across the continuum of care. In addition to preparing students to, to practice in acute care settings, the Vermont State Colleges here and other institutions offering nursing curricula in Vermont should modify curriculum where necessary to prepare students for practice across the continuum of care, including home and community-based settings, long-term care facilities, mental health agencies, and public health entities. The, the strategic plan also recommends um, developing and identifying strategies to streamline advancement through the nursing career ladder and to upskill existing staff, and specifically um, to identify uh, best practices and programs um, to uh, help um, professionals transition um, within the career, career ladder, for example, transitioning from LNA to LPN and um, identifying more ways to streamline advancement through the career ladder. Um, 
while, while working in clinical settings. The, uh, the plan also recommends that, the, that there be healthcare education offered to all students before leaving middle school. And the plan recommends that there be advertisement and recruitment for existing apprenticeship opportunities that are already supported by the Department of Labor. The next category of recommendations is about recruiting and retaining health professionals. And the first recommendation is to inventory and highlight state programs that support recruitment and retention of health professionals. In this recommendation, uh, the plan puts forward that working across, uh, working across agencies in the state of Vermont, there should be uh, inventory um, to promote existing state programs that assist healthcare employers in recruiting and, and retaining staff. For example, the Department of Labor uh, could clearly advertise its role and ability to assist Vermont orga organizations that are seeking international staff members. Um, we also, in this category of recommendations, um, recommend modifying or expanding programs that support working and living in Vermont already. The state uh, working across agencies, uh, the state team here should recommend and identify strategies to support workforce development and employment in Vermont. And key strategies would include increasing available housing and child care for all professionals and healthcare workers. Um, for example, um, Team members could identify and highlight existing opportunities for healthcare employers, such as the Vermont Rental Housing Investment Program, and recommend how these programs and others could be modified, expanded, or newly implemented for greater impact. Uh, examples could include fully funding the existing pipeline of housing problem, uh, projects, investing in the successful Vermont Housing Investment Program, investing in new private home builder, in the new private, a new private home builder program that's focused on creating missing middle housing for moderate income home buyers. We also recommend in this strategic plan, capitalizing on existing incentives to live and work in Vermont and promoting new incentives. And to do this uh, through work between agencies um, in the state of Vermont to market um, Vermont uh, naturally as a place to live and work. And then again, to highlight those aspects of Vermont that are particularly appealing uh, to healthcare workers and potentially to highlight new programming that would be even more appealing to healthcare workers. Um, some things that are important that we already know can be highlighted um, include the fast track for healthcare professional licensure, where through the through the Office of Professional Regulation, healthcare workers can become licensed um, to work in Vermont in a streamlined fashion. And um, Vermont is very competitive in this area in what the Fast Track program offers um, from the time that someone applies for licensure and becomes uh, licensed. And I'm sure that's an area you may want to explore further with the Office of Professional Regulation. We also recommend in this section promoting healthcare careers to new Vermonters. And in this recommendation, particularly um, promoting again the Office of Professional Regulation, Regulations interim administrative rule for assessing foreign credentials. This administrative rule is also an active is, is also uh, uh, designed to streamline the path uh, to licensure for persons who have foreign credentials uh, looking to work um, in, in the state of Vermont. Um, I also want to highlight here that within the $33 million um, 
and specifically uh, within the 15, uh, $15 million uh, proposal um, that uh, we have identified that some dollars be made available for the purpose of assisting employers uh, with costs due uh, costs that result from um, uh, and that would support um, employment of international uh, international health workers. We also recommend uh, developing a cross system strategy um, and. I, this, this language is uh, very particular to a particular section of ARPA, of the American Rescue Plan. I think you're probably more familiar with um, thinking about this section of ARPA as the Home and Community-Based Services 10% FMAP bump. Um, you may be familiar with um, the uh, federal program that provides for strengthening the home and community-based services uh, sector by providing for enhanced federal matching dollars. And again, we uh, emphasized in the report that these dollars be used um, to strengthen the home and community-based services system uh, through recruitment and retention programming. And these dollars are, rep, are, are contributing to that $33 million total investment um, that, we, that is being proposed. We also, it, the plan um, recommends promoting, I just wanna, it, it recommends supporting organizational wellness and peer support programs and specifically promoting uh, wellness and peer support for healthcare employers and leveraging existing resources for doing so through our Department of Mental Health. And finally, uh, the final recommendation in this category is to reduce administrative burden for healthcare providers um, so that uh, there's an ease, easing of the burden of practice and here the recommendation is um, for the legislature to review the results of the reports being submitted pursuant to Act 140 of 2020 and to take further action to implement any recommendations included in these reports that could lead to reducing administrative burden um, specifically regarding uh, the administrative burden associated with prior authorizations. In the category of regulatory strategies to address the healthcare workforce, uh, you've heard me name this strategy already, which is to advertise and promote the fast track for healthcare professional licensure for all OPR regulated professions. And in this regard, again, um, a theme in this report and in this presentation is to utilize existing platforms um, for the state of Vermont, such as the Think Vermont program as a way to um, advertise, promote, and elevate uh, Vermont's fast track to licensure for, for healthcare providers. We also recommend in the report differentiating Canadian healthcare workers from international healthcare workers to create uh, an even more expedited path uh, to licensure for our neighbors um, and, and those and, uh, and, and sharing of a border. Um, we also recommend reducing licensing barriers for telehealth practice and taking into account the recommendations that are have come forward from the work group that was created by Act 21 of 2021. The plan also recommends further evaluating the opportunities to remove barriers to licensure for mental health and substance use disorder treatment professionals specifically. And because of the, um, of the types of credentials um, in this field, um, there are uh, potentially more barriers um, for licensure um, for persons in this field who are coming to work in Vermont. And the re recommendation here 
would be that within the next five years, the OPR would undertake a systematic review of the licensing, licensing process for mental health and substance use disorder treatment professionals and make recommendations to address um, these barriers to licensure uh, specific in this field. And finally, um, the final recommendation in the regulatory strategy category is uh, a consideration for temporarily waiving licensure fees for first time licensed nursing assistants uh, in the interest of reducing as many barriers as possible um, for people to come into the healthcare workforce. This category of recommendations speaks to um, uh, modifications to practice that could provide for and um, or, or stretch the current workforce uh, to accommodate uh, more, uh, more need. Um, these recommendations include maximizing Medicare's flexibility uh, and reimbursement. Um, there are a number of, of um, ways where through um, Vermont's particular agreement with the federal government, it may be possible um, for Medicare reimbursement uh, to be provided um, for, certain, for certain services where it is not provided now. And that would mean that um, there would be more uh, Medicare coverage for those services and those types of, of healthcare professionals uh, thereby, thereby um, multiplying the workforce, at least from the perspective of what Medicare is reimbursing for. This, this um, section also recommends developing commercial reimbursement uh, models for audio only services, expanding telehealth coverage, making telehealth billing requirements clear, and um, exploring how we could establish a statewide telepsychiatry program in emergency departments, similar to one in North Carolina, so that there uh, could be a system to, um, uh, to help treat and divert psychiatric patients that are seeking care in emergency departments. And finally, um, I want, there, there are within the report, uh, a, a number of other um, recommendations for federal action, but I wanted to highlight these recommendations for federal action specifically um, with regard to traveling staffing agencies, because these agencies, while we have some local traveling staff agencies, we also have uh, the presence of many traveling staffing agencies that work across state lines. So um, really becomes a federal issue. We recommend supporting strategies that would minimize the increasing trend towards travel staffing. This trend does result in unsustainably high cost increases for healthcare employers. Uh, we recommend that these strategies could include anti-poaching provisions that would be directed at travel staffing agencies, price gouging prohibitions directed at these agencies and potentially reforming federal tax incentives that um, very strongly advantage these traveling staff agencies over employers um, because the agencies can offer non-taxed housing stipends, non-tax per diem such as meals and incidentals and non-taxed travel reimbursements. And that, that's the conclusion of the overview of the report. <laughs> and recommendations. Oh. Thank you. And if anyone else isn't kind of tired when thinking about everything that needs to happen and is some, some of which is underway, uh, you're not alone. Um, so I'm going to turn to my companion co-chair, uh, Representative Marcotte, and I see a lot of hands are going up. Is that the practice in your committee as well to use your electronic hands? So I wanna make sure that we all work together on this. Yes. Okay. Um, 
you know, I'm going to suggest perhaps that we take down the uh, sure. screen sharing so that we can all see each other. And um, while we we really have some limited time ahead of us, that's Mike. Are you okay with just starting to take questions? What? Uh, yeah, I think that's you, fine, or Bill. Do you, or do you want to weigh in at this point with any uh, thoughts or comments? No, I, I think it's probably good to go right, right to questions. And I think if, if uh, anyone from Commerce has questions, um, if we don't get to them, I think we will ask Ina to come into our committee for further discussions as we go along with our workforce. Yeah, and let me just say, this is, this is the next step. It's not the final step uh, in this process of working together with House Healthcare and Commerce, and also looking at the budget adjustment proposals, which we're trying to become more familiar with. So let's get right to it. I'm going to start with, uh, I'm going to alternate between committees just as a kind of a principle of how to proceed. But let's start with Representative Cordes and then Representative Kimball, and then we'll go back to Representative Peterson. Thank you. And thank you, Ina, for um, providing us with the, the recommendations. Um, and I want to preface what I'm about to say is that this is not my, uh, I am frustrated and um, I may be blunt at points and it's not directed um, at you, director. Um, the great resignation is happening for a reason. Um, it's happening because um, healthcare providers, healthcare workers, um, people in the system are, um, are burnt out. Um, we've been working overtime and yes, we get paid for working overtime, but that's not sustainable. Um, we're be the crisis is well beyond, um, a lot of these initiatives, which frankly, um, we have put into, um, programs and into bills, um, in the past before the pandemic. So yes, um, re tuition reimbursement, um, making licensing um, more efficient. Um, all of those things are good things. I don't want to say they, they aren't, but they're not going to fix this problem. Um, and it, it's a very little about retention of existing workers in this program. And I recognize that the state um, doesn't have uh, jurisdiction over private employers. Um, so I get that, um, but I just want it to be clear that um, before the pandemic, there was a vast gap in equity between just compensation for workers um, and administrate the administrative portion of, and I'm thinking of, of institutions right now. That has, um, that has further caused injury at this point when the kind of work that we're doing and the intensity of the work that we're doing um, is not, we're not going to be able to um, recruit more people and retain people by um, offering tax incentives and um, uh, education, re tuition reimbursement. We're just, we're not, as I said, we're well beyond that. Um, and there's a lot more I could say, but I won't. I'll, I'll just end by saying the. Um, I know we don't have jurisdiction over the federal what the federal government does, but to take away, I think we need to be very careful, or the go the federal government needs to be very careful about um, taking away the one of the only options that workers have for just compensation, which is. Uh, by taking away the opportunity to um, do travel work and get paid what they actually should get paid instead of focusing on um, keeping people in state um, and not expecting retirees. I, I don't know when I'm going to be able to retire. Um, I'd like to. Maybe I, I'm just going to end there. It This is... We need to do more than this. And I do appreciate all the work that went into this. And I hope that um, frontline workers, if they weren't involved in this um, planning process, 
um, that they get invited um, to be part of the process now. Thank you. I'm, uh, I'm just going to take on the role of moderating the questions at this point and alternate between committees, as I indicated. So Representative Kimball and Representative Peterson. Thank you, Chair Lippert. Uh, and thank you very much for your presentation. Um, I think you probably listed every conceivable incentive program that has been discussed uh, over the past um, year or two. I, I guess my question, uh, because we can't certainly do all of them, uh, if the advisory committee is looking at prioritizing them and saying what was more effective than others. Uh, I think the second question in terms of looking at the fundamentals is, is there anything that Vermont is doing now in the delivery of health care that stands out above its uh, peers, or could there be that would attract professionals uh, or retain professionals to Vermont uh, that stands out because of the way that we either educate or the way that we deliver healthcare services. Did the committee look at that as a, as a different tactic? So I'll, I'll take both of your questions and I'll try to take them in order. So first, the question about the prioritization of strategies. I think that that is a very fair question because it the, this is a very comprehensive um, compendium, if you will, of, of strategies. I think the advisory group felt strongly that that these strategies do and are interconnected and rely on one another. Um, you know, we could we could have a great way. Um, we could have all the slots in the world um, for persons to be educated, but if we're not kind of fostering that excitement about the healthcare careers in um, the K through 12 realm, for instance, then we might not have um, people who want to move into that field as, as an example. However, um, in terms of prioritization, um, the, the challenges for the workforce um, seemed very apparent and daunting at the time of this committee's convening, and I think have, have persisted and even become uh, more acute um, since the time that this report uh, was written. And so that is why you see, um, again, a proposal for investing a total of $33 million for healthcare employers to provide uh, in the in the very near future um, for recruitment and retention, uh, retention of their existing employees and, and hopefully recruitment as well. Um, so, and in, in that sense, that's certainly a priority in the very near term. When it comes to how um, the delivery of healthcare stands out in Vermont, um, different than other places to make it more competitive. I really appreciate Representative Cordes's um, suggestion for frontline workers to be contributing um, to this work because I think it's the frontline workers that would be able to identify where Vermont stands out uh, best in terms of how practice looks different. But we also have discussed um, among those uh, in across departments as we think about strategies and how Vermont um, can be competitive in a fiercely competitive environment. Um, one of the things that stands out is Vermont's vaccination rate uh, so that healthcare workers coming to provide care in the state um, understand that they are coming to provide care in, in a highly vaccinated um, environment. Um, I'm going to continue with, uh, so Representative Peterson, then uh, I think Representative Mulvaney Stanek, then yes. Representative Black and Dickinson. Yes, thank you. And thank you, Director, for a comprehensive uh, presentation. It's, it seems to me, well, let me just ask a question, I guess, before I go into any other thing. Yeah, I think we need to, we need to. Uh, I know. Yeah, you're right. You're we're right, doing this and we'll take our testimony from yep. each other later. My question is this, does, does the state um, maintain a list of 
retirees from the healthcare industry that they can then go to and and maybe coax some folks out of retirement to maybe work half a day, a couple of days a week, or you know, a, a full day, one day a week, or or assist in any way possible to take the burden off of the health care. I didn't see anything in your presentation about that because part of my philosophy on this on the lack of workforce and, and people not coming back is a, a lot of older people were working and, and when the pandemic hit they were the most vulnerable. They left and found <laughs> retired life pretty good and they never came back. But all of us that are retired can use you know three or four hundred bucks extra a week. And and it seems to me that might be a way to I, I wondered if that was considered. I'll leave it at that. Uh, certainly there, there was consideration for um, uh, whether or not um, the retired nurses would want to serve as nurse educators, um, whether, whether or not we have a comprehensive um, uh, listing of those retired individuals. I think that's something I need to follow up on, um, but there are a number of the, and, and someone can please help me. I'm, I'm, um, the name is escaping me, but we did um, see um, and have seen many retired health professionals um, participate in the delivery of vaccines uh, to Vermonters and in uh, testing on um, other and in other ways working with their local healthcare providers um, as ambassadors or in other roles. Um, Representative Mulvaney Stanek. Thank you, Representative um, Lippert. Uh, hi, Emma, it's nice to meet you. Um, I serve on Commerce, I don't think we've met yet. And I just was wondering to build off a little bit of, about the existing workforce, because I think it's a lot of both what we heard in the state of state yesterday, and even in, in this, um, this plan focuses a lot about bringing new people in. And we have a lot of Vermonters here working in healthcare, working in the mental health um, and substance abuse field. And I was, I share Representative Cordes's point a little bit here about, I'm curious if we can learn more about how to retain people in these fields. Because when I see folks working in the healthcare world here uh, in the state, uh, I'm wondering about livability of these jobs um, in terms of what they're paying and the hours required of folks. I'm, I'm wondering about safe and inclusive work environments for folks who, especially our new Vermonters, um, where there's language access or other issues that might come up with um, workplaces not being inclusive and safe, um, issues of racism and, and other things. I've heard stories from UVM Medical Center my, my, near my district. So I'm just curious if, if the, um, the advisory uh, group went into the weeds a little bit to consider these pieces of the existing Vermont workforce and why we're losing people. Because if we keep recruiting people into a system that's going to lose them in a year or two, that's not solving any sort of problem. The advisory group did, did have discussion and, and consideration, um, perhaps not um, comprehensively to address all of the factors that you just named, but certainly in acknowledging and um, recommending that there be strategies specifically to address burnout in the healthcare and the health provider workforce. And so that, that is where our dialogue um, was uh, addressing your question and in that those recommendations specifically. So I'm so again, uh, I'm aware of the time I'm I'm aware of trying to balance. Uh, we have a lot more questions and I'm sure there are even more. Uh, this is a next step. It's not. And so I want to be also respectful of our witnesses commitments, uh, which I understand and she is actually going to be testifying in the Appropriations Committee, House Appropriations Committee later this afternoon, our committee is going to go and follow that testimony as well. And um, so Representative Marcotte, I'm, I'm torn, but I'm thinking we probably need to not continue much, continue any longer for that matter, uh, despite the fact that we have many questions in front of us because our witness needs to meet another commitment. So. I agree, Bill. Um, I think it's, uh, 
Uh, it's a beginning, not the end. So as you said, so I would ask my committee members to hold on to their questions. And um, as we meet again, um, we'll bring those questions to, to the forefront. Thank you. And while our committee has done a fair amount of work, frankly, on healthcare workforce issues over the past number of years, uh, I think it would be helpful at some point perhaps for us to benefit from what your committee in House Commerce and uh, Economic Development has learned generally around what you understand to be uh, the most uh, the most appropriate incentives, et cetera. So let's, let's consider this the beginning and uh, take some further steps together at some point in time. As, as we can figure that out. So I apologize for members who haven't had a chance to pose their questions. Uh, I'm sure Ina is welcome, would welcome you to uh, reach out to her directly uh, as well. And uh, unfortunately, I think we need to bring this to a close for the current moment.